Julie Roussel here. Hey, welcome and thanks for joining in on this Wacky Wednesday where you never know what the topic's be going to be or if I'll happen to be on time because, hey, that's the way life works out sometimes. But I'm usually live on Wednesday and Sunday nights about this time, maybe a little earlier. But um, I probably will be shifting to just Wacky Wednesdays due to football season, school activities, and even some new responsibilities that I'll mention a little bit more about later. But um, as always, if you hear something that you find helpful or resonates with you, leave a reaction, uh, drop a comment in the thread. I always love and appreciate hearing from you, even if it's just to say, hey. Share the video with anyone you think it might help, and PM me if you have questions or want to hear more. I'm always happy to share the things that I'm learning, and I hope that they help you. Hello, Jim. Great to see you. It's been a long time. Hey, Dana. Nice to see you, lady. See more joining in. It's great to have you. I appreciate you popping in on your Wednesday evening. But I'm going to go right ahead and start with the question of the night. So have you ever heard the saying, you never want to put all of your eggs in one basket? What does it mean and why don't you want to do that? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, we've all said that many of many times and you're wondering, hmm, you know? Well, I was wondering if I'm saying it correctly. You know, so I Googled it, of course, and it's a very old phrase and it says, don't concentrate all your prospects or resources in one thing or one place or you could lose everything. You know, kind of like a carton of eggs. And if you happen to, whoa, you can see they still have eggs in it. But if you happen to drop it, oops, what happens? And I'm sure you've done this before, where you've got a mess all over the floor and you're kind of ticked off because you wasted all those eggs and you'd have to waste more money and gas to go get more, right? I mean, I'm sure that that's happened to you. Oh, hey, I see more joining in. Hey, John, great to see you, bud. It's been a really long time. I'll have to catch up sometime soon. But, um, like I was saying, when it comes to a carton of eggs, it's the same thing when it comes to your life and finances. You know, because if you've ever said, well, hey, that's not in my budget, you know, I can't pay my bills, it's just too much, I just don't have enough money, you know, you may find this a little bit helpful. So I'd like to share with you what I've learned and how it could help you. You know, most of us, we think of income, we think of only one type when there's actually two. Now the linear is what we most what most of us do on a daily basis, where you have to go to work to recreate that income, because if you don't work, you don't get paid. You know, it's a, some people call it a cubicle scheme, and some people laughingly refer to it as jail, maybe? I don't know. You know, whether you work for a company or you're a teacher or an office, you basically work 40 years to hope to have enough money to retire comfortably at some, you know, same type of job when you're done, hoping. And the other type of income is passive residual, which is totally different. And I didn't understand this until recently. That the, it's the income that comes after your initial work, after your initial investment, and you continue to receive income in the future. Just like actors do, they receive royalties for films, authors receive royalties on books that they've written from, from future sales. You know, or if you happen to be a multiple property business owner, you know, you would continue to receive money in the future from the profit on those properties. And, you know, most people are thinking, well, hey, I have linear, so why do I need passive? Well, if you've ever heard of Warren Buffett, he's the third richest person in the U.S., and he's a billionaire. And he was quoted as saying, you know, you never depend, and I'm quoting loosely here, you never depend on a single stream of income. You make an investment to create a second source of income. And, you know, he wasn't talking about a retirement plan for the future. He was talking about a second income stream now. And, you know, most millionaires, what I discovered is they have about seven on the average, seven streams of income. That's how they made all that money. <laughs> and not all of them were linear. Most of them were passive residual. So, hmm, you know, what do they know that we don't? I don't know. But for the longest time, you know, I was, we were always dependent on my hubby's stream of income, which was totally linear, one only. And there were several times that we were scared 
and stressed and we knew that any day he could lose his job and there would poof all our income would disappear you know and we we'd be on unemployment you know we'd have to sell the house live in the car you know all of that kind of things is stressful on a daily basis when you know you can't make and pay your bills and at that point you know you can't even afford daycare because you couldn't afford the job in the first place so we were pretty in the end we were pretty lucky that my hub my hubby managed to find a job at that time. You know, when you're home with a couple little ones, it's not always easy to have that, that job that you need. And we were lucky because he didn't, we didn't have to move. You know, it was still linear, but at least it was a paycheck, at least a stable company. So, you know, a few years later, when I had the opportunity to run my own home business and realize that a passive residual type of income added a second stream of income now, and in the future. You know, I jumped at the chance. I mean, I don't mind working hard. I have, I'm a proponent of hard work, but I want to work smart too. You know, I enjoy, I'll be honest, I enjoy being my own boss. You know, I have a work schedule that fits when I need it to, virtually as well. You know, you can add all the extra benefits that go with it, like tax write-offs, you know, your work time is minimized, and you still get paid. And even now, and in the future, even while you sleep. And if you have to take a couple days off, you know, when your kids are sick, it isn't going to hurt you. You know, if you happen to help a child overcome their learning struggles, or if you want to volunteer, or even if you decide to take on a new responsibility, you know, that one that I mentioned early in the beginning, like when you've been asked to coach a JV boy, high school boys volleyball team. Yeah, it's a huge commitment, but it's not something that I could have done if I was teaching or and working on the side. It's not something that I would have been able to do. And coaching high school volleyball is something that I love to do and I missed, but I couldn't do it without the flexibility provided by what I do now. So yeah, I can still volunteer more, I can still donate more, but most importantly, I still get to be a mom that stays home with their kids. So if you had all your eggs in one basket, you know, maybe a passive residual stream is right for you. Maybe it's not, but it's worth looking into, right? So if you've heard something that you found helpful or resonates with you, leave a reaction, drop a comment in your thread, and I always love and appreciate everyone. Share the video with anyone you think it might help, or PM me if you have questions or want to hear more about how to put more of your eggs from one basket into another. Because as you know, times and life change, you need multiple streams of income, including a residual one, to pay your bills to have enough for the future. And having a passive residual stream of income means your family doesn't have to put all of their eggs in one basket and pray that they don't break. Putting eggs in another basket, well, that's just plain smart. I'll catch you later.